What's up everyone, this is Nalik Dreams, and welcome back to part 2 on the discussion of crit builds and how they're posing a problem for the hero system changes, and I wanted to use this as an example to question how Epic plans to proceed with the hero rework. As I began to look into some old crit builds that were available with heroes prior to the rework, I started noticing some changes that were kind of making it difficult to recreate what we used to play with, and making it able to allow us to use the weapons that we currently have. And this is kind of the reason that I didn't want to show how to recreate crit builds with the release of the part 1 video because there's a few problems at hand that I think Epic needs to fix first before anyone makes a decision on how they should be changing up their weapons. So just to keep it simple we're going to take a look at a couple of loadouts here and I'll try to explain what they changed and why you might want to hold off on trying to recreate a build or make a build viable with crit right now because it may potentially change later down the line and then I'll try to tie that into the things that Epic could change to help us out as players because these resources that we spend on weapons and heroes they're important and it takes us some time to get so we don't want to just throw them away so we'll just hop right into buckshot raptors loadout here and as we showed in the part one video there wasn't any support bonuses like adjustable choke that used to be in the game to boost crit rating so that put us at a lesser crit chance to be able to focus on a crit build since you won't be able to actually proc any real crits due to the crit chance being lower this is a hindrance in the loadout and trying to make a crit build and especially with weapons like shotguns where you don't have a fast fire rate this is going to seem much more impactful on being able to actually enjoy the damage coming out of a crit build because you're not actually pumping the fire rate and seeing more crits potentially pop up you're mainly focusing around one shot like with the stalwart squire or with the helium shotgun having a little bit lesser of a fire rate you're not seeing as much damage output because you're not critting as often and it's not like an assault rifle where you're throwing a bunch of bullets at a husk's way and seeing a lot of crits pop up because fire rate does include the potential for just hitting crits more often you're kind of just sitting there with a shotgun not seeing much output because your one shot capacity just reloading shell after shell doesn't really show off as many crit numbers you have to rely on that crit to hit hard and heavy in one shot you can't continue to follow up with more bullets at a quick pace and it really starts to show when you see weapons like the stalwart squire that can obviously pack a punch turn into something a little bit more lackluster in the potential of not hitting crits and ending up having to shoot blasters for two to three shots or smashers for five to six shots when you could have just seen so much more damage impact from the start. But it doesn't just end there. We're going to go ahead and hop over to another loadout where I've recreated a Harvester Sarah build. Or at least did the best that I could to recreate it. And it is pretty close. You do get some crit rating and you do get the scythe buffs. However, it does put you at a disadvantage of what we used to have. And a lot of people in the community have noticed this. A lot of people rendered Harvester Sarah not as good as she used to be. And kind of just came to the conclusion that they thought that Harvester Sarah was not going to be as good of a scythe hero as she once was. But just to clarify, we can see here in the support team that we do have Fiona slotted with anatomy lessons to increase our crit rating with swords, axes, and size, and that will boost our crit chance with size, but as an important note for later on, our scythe to meet you here in Harvester Sarah's perks, it is upped from the 48% that it used to be, and if you aren't familiar with Harvester Sarah, you get that when you slow or snare a target. However, the downside to this is that it doesn't apply it to the support perk. And if we back out here and go over to the schematics and check out the reaper scythe that i used to have for the harvester sarah build we can see that i used to run a double crit damage and for anyone that is familiar with how that used to work harvester used to have her own passive anatomy lessons while also being able to slot anatomy lessons in the support and that gave you enough crit chance in the build to not be forced to slot out any of this crit damage for a critical rating bonus you were able to hit your threshold and reliably hit crits while also having this massive crit damage bonus here you can see that we have 37 percent this used to sit on about 50 or 51 percent with both the anatomy lessons slotted so this is the problem that you're seeing with fiona in the slot is that she does grant 15 crit rating but that only puts us at 37.5 percent crit chance and that's not enough to reliably hit a crit so some people would try to opt out in the harvester sarah commander slot and try to swap it for fiona in the primary since fiona in the primary does give 40 crit rating 
and that would boost you well enough over 50% crit chance that you would reliably be able to use this double crit damage build. However, that's where another problem comes in with the rework changes because as we mentioned, the Harvester Sarah perks, her support perk does not get access to the slow and snare. So that means that you're not getting your bonus from the snare and the way that I set up this Reaper Scythe was to get bonus damage off of Affliction. And so I've perked out a Reaper Scythe that has Affliction and doesn't take advantage of the snare since there's no way for it to apply it by itself. It's not in the Harvester Sarah support perk. You would have to run her in that primary slot. So in one form or another, I'm losing out with the current Reaper Scythe that I have. And this is where I want to get more in depth with what Epic is planning to do with the hero rework because this is the problem at hand. I noticed in the comments of the part one video that there are players out there just like myself, they're having to switch around weapons in order to accommodate the ways that the hero rework system is working now. But this is where the problem is for many players because to my understanding, Epic said that if they were to make a change that altered the way something worked, whether it was a hero or a weapon, they would make it eligible for reset. However, when 8.0 came out, we had no eligibility to reset any weapons that were potentially changed. And I've seen many people in the community make changes to weapons to better suit the way that a hero performs now, causing them to use up some resources that they shouldn't have had to spend and they wouldn't have had to spend prior to the hero rework. And to me, this does make some weapons fall into a balance change that should make them eligible for a reset seeing as they don't perform now the way they did and that was the reason for them allowing us to reset heroes for the possibility that we didn't like the way that they performed after they made the changes. Same with the weapons in this situation I feel that some people should be compensated or allowed to make the reset in order to get the materials back from a weapon that they might not like the way they used to. But this does spark the question that if they didn't allow for the eligibility to reset any of our weapons upon the release of the hero rework then is it their intention to to implement more heroes into the game that will give us back some of those crit rating bonuses. And maybe that does entail that we should wait patiently and see what they decide to throw into the game for us for the later iterations of the hero rework. However, that does pose a little bit of a problem seeing as when the recombobulator came out, it took some time for them to fine tune the way the recombobulator works now. And that could possibly cause some troubles in the community with some people being dissatisfied with the time it takes for them to fix these things and maybe give us back some of the crit rating or even building costs for constructors. I know that there are some things out there that people wish they had from the time before the hero rework was put into the game. But as a community, I think it best that we give some positive hope for Epic to come out with these things in a timely manner. And maybe this gives a chance to shine some light on Epic and allow them to be transparent with what they plan to do in the later versions of the hero rework. That's it for this one though guys, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments and be very vocal with this one because it's very important for us as a player base to make it known to Epic what we want to see in the game and to see them transparent with what they plan to do if they're going to let us change it later on or compensate us in some form of way since this stuff can be very time consuming and resources can take a while to get. But I just want to thank you all again for watching and showing your support and I'll see you in the next one.